tonight we're going to be tuning this Genesis. It's a two liter, you know, turbo 2010, very close to stock. And I'm going to make uh, a series of these videos so that you guys kind of get an idea. You know, there's a lot of BS on the internet. Oh, this ECU is the best ECU. This one's better than that one. Or, you know, all the other ones are junk. And uh, most of them these days, they all work, get the job done. So as I kind of tune a couple of these, I'll make just quick, quick little videos so you can see what's involved of getting a car up and running on various ECUs and what's involved in tuning them like, you know, five, ten minutes kind of tops. Just to give you an idea of how easy some of them are, how difficult others are, general software layout, things like that. So this one's getting a Haltech, their Platinum plug-in series. It's already installed in the car, just a, a, a kind of an adapter harness in the ECU gets mounted up. Um, fairly stock, upgraded turbo, intercooler, bigger injectors, you know, blow-off valve, just your typical very, very mild, but the motor itself is stock. There's no cams or porting or anything like that. So the ECU is installed, and we're going to just jump right in, and I'll show you how to load up a base map. Well, I'll first create a base map to start it up and uh, get it fired up. Um, let's just jump right in, open the base file. Haltech always provides a nice startup map for any of their kind of plug-and-play or plug-in ECU. So this Hyundai one is this guy. It's just going to load up. All right, so this is uh, the way Haltech kind of lays their stuff out. It's, it's kind of similar to most ECUs. Uh, in the center here is your actual tuning area. Here you got like a representation, you know, it could be 2D, it's got 3D. This just happens to be here. On here we got some monitors. Uh, it's all grayed out now because the car's not actually running, but it, it's right there. On the left side here, you've got all the tuning parameters that a guy can adjust. And what's really nice about Haltech is if it's here, it's active and you can tune it. And in the main setup where I'll show you, you can actually turn the stuff on and off very easily and once you turn it off it disappears from your list so let's do that uh, well we're not going to do that yet but we're gonna set this up to run this car so setup main setup so even though this is designed to run a stock vehicle this vehicle isn't stock it's got a few mods so we have to you know go there and change things up so when you open the setup menu basic main this is where all your kind of running parameters are set up. So in tuning method, we've got V, which is pretty standard. You could also go uh, injection time, like just a straight pulse width table or lambda correction. Uh, your load source. And of course, we usually work with manifold absolute pressure based. So that's for ignition. Uh, we're using the primary map sensor. These cars have two, so we're just using the main one. Engine size, you know, what RPM ab above which is no longer cranking, you know, below that it's cranking. Some injector stuff. And then here's the ignition setup, trigger angle, uh, RPM display, you know, standard stuff. So this trigger angle though, this is where if it's got a timing pointer and it's got a marked pulley, when you get it up and running or before you do, you can do it even during cranking, check your timing. Make sure the timing that you see on the light matches what the ECU has. All right, so all this is good. We don't have to change it in here. Advanced menu, this is these functions that I was talking about. So you can choose, you know, a bunch of stuff. You know, you got anti-lag and you got cyclic idle and whatever you need. Uh, if you take it off of here, it disappears from the table on the left. So it's pretty cool. So in here, I think we're just going to leave everything alone because, um, well, because it's just a stock-ish vehicle with a few mods, we'll just kind of leave that alone. Your next tab here is Outputs. So this is the stuff the Haltech is controlling that you can tune. Now, there's it controls a bunch of stuff because this is a CAN bus vehicle. So it controls a, a bunch of stuff in the background, but this is the stuff that we're tuning. So uh, we're not going to do boost control for now because it's got an aftermarket turbo, aftermarket actuator, you know, just... So we don't overboost or do anything weird. We're just going to shut that off and run a wastegate for the first pull. O2 heater. So this is for the narrow band, the stock factory O2 sensor. We're not running that either because we've got a wide band plumbed in. 
So we'll shut that off. Intake cams, exhaust, fans, tack, fuel pump, uh, recirculation valve. We're not running that. Again, aftermarket turbo doesn't have it. So we're just gonna do that. And that's it for there. Now, as you saw, when I clicked some of these things, it uh, lit up a, a little flag going, hey, you did something wrong. We'll go back to that, I'll show you why. Inputs. So this is opposite outputs, obviously. So we're using, we could log both manifolds, even though we're gonna use the first one for tuning, we can log the second one. Narrow band O2 sensor. So this we don't need anymore because we're not running it. AC pressure, power steering switch, yes, oil temperature. Uh, vehicle speed, yeah, so all that stuff's the same. The only thing we're adding to the inputs is a wideband. And the customer told me, he, you know, it's a plug and play ECU, but you can hi uh, wire in auxiliary sensors or whatever. So he told me it was on number two. And then you scroll, you, you activate the channel, and then here's like a bazillion things that you could add. Uh, fuel pressure sensors and flex fuel sensors and whatever but wideband is right at the bottom and you can see you could add up to four of them on this car it's four cylinders so that makes sense click that when we did that up at the top here this o2 wideband tab popped up so we click on that that is just your uh curve that the output the volt uh the wideband puts out so zero to five volts is this in this afr so this one is this and Yours will be different. You'll have to check your documentation. Same thing, we'll go apply that. Uh, devices is any sort of CAN bus, uh, thermocouple amplifier boxes, the expander boxes if you need more channels, wideband expand, like, you know, the only thing we're gonna need to do is make sure this is on Haltech CAN version two because our dyno will talk to the CCU, which is really nice, so it was already that. So let's go back to see what this red light was. And of course, we got O2 control. It's all messed up because we shut off those narrow band uh, factory ones. So all we have to do is tell it to use the wide band for uh, wide band control. And then main, because we shoot off, uh, we shut off boost correction, you know, because we shut off boost control, these lit up. So we don't really need that table either. So we hit apply. Okay, good. Now, so this is Haltech, what they came up with, the fuel table. The next thing down here is your target AFRs. Let's have a look. So it's pretty standard. You got 14.7 to cruise. You know, as it gets into boost, it goes into the 13s, and then up top, 11s, 12s, and then right up at the top end, they've got some 10s in here. This is probably, well, two things, probably safety, and they probably, uh, di or, sorry, data log the stock Genesis, and they do run brutally rich uh, i said i wasn't going to change these kind of things but i can't leave it at that i'm just going to put that a flat 11 2 as a target and we'll start there normally when i set these cars up i kind of have a good idea where it's going to go but for you to get up and running this is this is great uh injector dead time so if you bought your injectors they should have sent you a nice little sheet with some injector dead times we're just going to take ours copy it over to the Haltech because we're not running stock injectors. These are, uh, what are the Evo 10 injectors? So, and then same thing with the injector flow rate. We've got a nice little data sheet from our injector guy and we just copy that over and boom. And then your other corrections are, let's see, we've got injector firing angle. We'll leave it alone. Prime pulse time. Eek. We should change this because this is the amount of prime pulse. So when you hit the key, it primes. And because we are about 30% bigger on the injectors, I'm going to take 30% out of this because this is a straight millisecond table. So we'll just highlight it. Haltech, super easy edit to, to do a percent. You just hit P, pops up, go minus, let's say it's roughly 30. We don't have to be exact. We'll, we'll check that in the morning when it's cold and make sure we get a good cold start. Post start enrichment, that's a percentage, so that's fine. Cool and temp correction, that's all good. Air temp, overall trim, it should be zero, and it is. Uh, and then the next thing, just the base timing table. We'll have a quick look here. So under boost, they've got, you know, 14 pounds. They're asking for eight, nine degrees, 15, like super conservative. 
but we're going to leave all that just to prove to you that we can start it and run it and make a dyno pull with the base map with just the just the basic changes for uh, the mods to this car. So that's it. Save as. Pick a name. We'll go start up. Hit enter. Done. Now we're going to go put this in the car, upload it, and we'll make some pulls. All right, so we're in the car. Uh, hooked up the USB cable to the Haltech. Uh, connected. We're just going to upload our map. So you just go file, upload. And then we choose her, we called it startup there. And right there you see the progress bar, it's it's uploading. And then when it's ready, you'll see all the gauges and stuff go live. Let's see what happens. Amazing. Car's pretty cold. Their base map, just so you can see the temperature gauge. It's been sitting here a while. Um, <laughs> there's her fuel right off the hop. So she's gonna be maybe a little bit lean because it's still on the fuel enrichment uh, right there, but not much, 5%. So we're good to go. I'm gonna just go, like we talked about, I'm gonna go check the timing quickly, set the dy dyno up, and we're gonna make our first pull with a completely, almost completely stock base map. And presto, it's just that easy. It uh, 241 horsepower at the wheels on a car that was rated at 210 from the factory on a very first pull on a on a minimally changed base map. Uh, we, what did we do? Changed basically injector data, shut off the boost control because he's got an aftermarket actuator on there. It made 12 pounds of boost, so it, it's pretty healthy. Air fuel is a little leaner than we hoped or at least then we targeted it anyway. It was 11.2 in the base map, as you recall, I couldn't leave it in the tens. And it, it hit 11.6, 11.5. And actually that's to be expected because we got the, the turbo and the exhaust and, and whatnot. So really, really good. So from here, now the tuning starts. Now we can crank it up and make some power and, and do actual tuning. But uh, this is how easy it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be rocket science it's not supposed to you know make you pull your hair out a well-developed ecu with a well-supported product uh, it should just work that's that's the way it is and all the haltech stuff with their harness series uh with their plug-in series they're always got some base maps out there that should get you up and running with your minimal changes for your mods um a lot of bullshit oh what's the best ecu this or that you know there's uh, Haltech's been one of my favorites because the software's you saw how simple and well laid out it is. I like many others, but this video is about Haltech and this is just what it's supposed to do. So happy tuning, and, and I hope this helped somebody.